Have you ever dreamt of owning some properties but you don't have the cash to buy them right now? Or maybe you just want to share those profits from the famous shopping malls like Sunway Pyramid, Mid Valley or Wanutama etc. Well, here's where REITs come into play, short for Real Estate Investment Trust, which is a stock traded on the stock exchange that lets you own a tiny piece of big properties, ranging from shopping malls to industrial, commercial and residential buildings. And the cool part is, when these properties earn money, usually from their monthly rental, you get a share of it as an investor. All without the need for a ton of cash upfront or dealing with the hassles of being a landlord. Trust me, it's not fun at all. So here's how REITs really work. Imagine it like a magical wallet where people like you and me put our money together to buy properties. Awesome, right? Then the wallet's manager, which is the REIT management company, buys all these places and then rent them out to people. And the rent money goes back into the wallet. And guess what? It's shared among all of us investors, just like everyone getting a slice of the rent pie. And that's where you as a REIT investor get your passive income or dividends. Sounds good, right? But also, like all investments, REITs have their fair share of risk as well. One of them is, of course, real estate related risk, which could be in the form of interest rate risk. Like, for example, if Bank Negara BNM raises the interest rate, or we call it the OPR, that will also mean higher interest expense for businesses which in turn means lower profit for the REITs. And of course, not to forget economic risk, just like how during back in COVID-19, many REITs were forced to give rebates to their tenants. And even so, most of the tenants did not survive and were forced to terminate their leases. And guess who's the ultimate loser? It's the REITs company behind those shopping malls and also commercial buildings. Alright, now let's talk about the different types of REITs. In Malaysia or just generally in Asia, we have got a wide variety of REITs tailored to specific sectors like retail, hotels, industrial, office, healthcare, etc. And as self-explanatory as it can be, retail REITs invest in shopping malls or any retail spaces, while hotel REITs invest in hotels. Simple, right? So for example, IGB REIT costing one ringgit 65 cents per share as of the recording of this video, invest in Mid Valley and the Gardens Mall, while YTL REIT priced at one ringgit and two cents per share, invest in hotels like JW Merritt Hotel KL, Ritz Carlton KL, and the Majestic Hotel. And over in Singapore, you have the likes of SunTech REIT, which costs one point two two Sing dollar per share, or about four ringgit per share. And they own real estates that are primarily used for office and also for retail purposes, like SunTech City. But if if you look at the US REITs market, they are divided into three types, the equity REIT or we call it the E-REITs, mortgage REIT or M REITs and also hybrid REIT. The first one E-REIT is the most common one where the property bosses own and manage the real estates and get revenue from renting out these spaces. And these properties can range from office buildings and apartments to shopping centers and hotels etc. And then they will then share the rent or earnings with you in the form of dividends. For example, the largest e-read by market cap is Prologis with more than $110 billion. They acquire and develop large real estate properties in the United States and also all around the world. Moving on to m reads where instead of owning the actual properties, they own mortgages on real estate properties different, huh? which can be either residential or commercial mortgages. And their profit is the difference between the higher income they get from the mortgages and also the lower interest they pay on their borrowings. Give you an example, the most valuable mortgage rate in the world is Annerly Capital Management NLY, which has $79 billion in their portfolio currently leading residential mortgage finance market. And lastly, the hybrid REIT, the multitasker, which does both owning properties and also lending money. And that allows them to capitalize on both rental income, like buildings and land, and also interest income. 
mortgage loans. For example, Starwood Property Trust is known for its diversified real estate finance platform with over $50 billion in assets under management. It invests in a mix of commercial and residential mortgage loans as well as various real estate related debt and equity investments. And this hybrid approach allows it to benefit from both interest income and also potential property appreciation. So if you are someone that prefers a hybrid rate that doesn't just depend on either dividend or just depend on capital gains then you know what to look out for but obviously here's a potential deal breaker for you any dividends paid by US companies or REITs in this context will be taxed 30% before the dividends reach your account especially if you come from a country with no tax treaty with the United States like Malaysia and Singapore so just be very mindful of that but hold on where can you get your hands on these REITs well it's as simple as buying stocks and here's where I like to introduce Interactive Brokers, a very very well reputable and well regulated stock broker in more than 10 different countries including the US, UK, Singapore and many many more. And if say the US or Singaporean REITs are something you up your alley, you can actually buy them easily through Interactive Brokers. Just look for the stock ticker, say Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust and with the ticker symbol C38U and you can just buy it right over. Over there. Just remember to check Singapore in your trading permission. So for those of you who always wanted to diversify your holdings to Singaporean stocks, here's your chance. And wait, that's not all before you ask, they also come with an extremely cheap brokerage package where you only need to pay 2.5 sing dollar to trade in Singapore exchange. Pretty amazing right? Feel free to use my links down below to open an interactive brokers account for yourself. Alright, let's get back to the video. So here's the juicy part the returns. Most REITs pay out steady incomes, usually in the form of dividends like I mentioned earlier. And these come from the rents paid by tenants occupying the REITs properties. And because REITs are required by the regulators to share a big slice of their income with you, which is about 90% of their income regardless whether the REITs are public or private, their dividends are usually much higher than your average stock on the S&P 500 index or just most of the stock markets. And most of the dividends are paid quarterly or annually in rare cases and the minimum order for stocks in Malaysia and Singapore is 100 units. So take Sunway Reed or Sun Reed from Malaysia for example price at 1 ringgit 49 cents per unit as of the recording of this video. The minimum you need to buy is 149 ringgit and if you bought it before the dividend X date, for example on the 30th August 2023, with a 3.06% dividend yield, you will then get paid about 4 ringgit 56 cents for that quarter for your dividends. But do note that the dividend yield changes based on their earnings so it's not necessarily a flat yield all year round. And what else besides not needing high capital and still getting paid regularly through the dividends, REITs are liquid. So if you have changed your mind about the properties at any time, really just any time, you can just sell it like selling stocks on the stock market and this gives you liquidity. Liquidity, very important, unlike buying physical properties like a house which can typically take you weeks or months or even years before you even find the right buyer at the right price so you can't get back your cash immediately if you so need them. But how do REITs make money? Is it just purely from rental income? Well, yes, that's the main source of revenue but there's also capital appreciation. Imagine owning a piece of a shopping mall in a booming city. As the city grows, the property becomes more valuable and this increase in value shows up in the REIT stock price as well. So the money you put in today might be worth more in the next few years on top of getting paid through dividends regularly. So not only do you get your rental income, but your investment might also grow in terms of its value. But of course, let's keep it real. Not all REITs are the same, different markets, different properties and different management styles bring different returns and as you can see in the last 20 years alone dividend returns in Asia have beaten those from the US and are also comparable to those from the Europe. So now the big question is, is REIT suitable for everyone? Well as much as I hate to say it, it depends on your risk tolerance and also your financial goals. For me as a young investor with minimal commitments. 
I personally prefer higher risk investments that bring more growth in the long term. For example, in the individual US tech stocks like Tesla and Apple. But that said, REITs can also be a fantastic option for stable and passive income, especially Malaysian or Singaporean REITs, which doesn't tax most of us Malaysians for the dividends received. Well, what about you? Tell me in the comments down below why you would or wouldn't go for REITs. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.